Hi guys, welcome back to the Spurred On podcast and this is Tottenham Transfer Rumours and we have been linked with three absolute wonder kids this week that I'm going to talk to you about and again I want to start by saying how exciting it is that Tottenham seem to be absolutely strategically all together from the top to the bottom of the club through the recruitment team, through Johan Langer, through Ange Postacoglu and we are looking at young, raw potential talent who can start at Spurs, make their name and potentially even, and I'm not saying I want us to sell our best players, but potentially be sold on at good sell-on value, something that we used to have in the days uh, starting from about 15 years ago when we bought Carrick, we bought Defoe, we bought Berbatov from uh, Leverkusen and all of them were then sold on at sell-on value. Even Robbie Keane who we bought, we sold him on to Liverpool for 20 million and then got him back. Actually it might might even have been more. So plenty of young, talented players that we used to buy and sell them on at sell-on value. And then just in the last five or six years, we've not been able to do that. We turned down a lot of big offers for the likes of Danny Rose, for Deli Alley in their kind of pomp years at Spurs. And that wasn't good in terms of the overall business of the club in terms of moving forward, by which I would use the example of Philip Coutinho at Liverpool. They sold him for $140 million and they invested that money on uh, Alisson in goal and Virgil van Dijk. And it is those two players who I would say are most responsible, and certainly on the playing side, but along with the manager Jurgen Klopp, for Liverpool having won the Champions League and the league and plenty of other trophies. So Spurs strategically now are on a better footing and you can tell that from the kind of players that we are now being linked to. Like Bergvall, who we got uh, just in January, who's coming in in the summer. Like Destiny Udogi, who came in. Like Pat Matasar. It's been something strategically that's been changing over the last three, four years or so under Paratici and now moving on with Johan Langer and it's very exciting to be linked with these wonder kids. So first up, uh, although frankly, first up, this isn't a great example of that, but he's only 25, he's still young enough, but it's Omar Mamouche, an attacker. He's a Wolfsburg player in Germany, but currently on loan at Stuttgart and ripping it up over there. He's 25 years old. He scored five goals in 27 caps for Egypt. He's an Egyptian national player. But this season for Stuttgart, he scored 10 goals in 18 games, including five assists as well. He's six foot tall. Transfer Market, that great website. If you don't follow Transfer Market, go and check them out. They give you all the best details about those players. They rate him at about 15 million euros. So we'd be looking realistically with kind of the Premier League tax and having to pay a little bit more than players are worth. I think we'd be looking at spending 25 million euros or something on him. He's a very unselfish player, which is good for an attacker. He's a striker, but he can play kind of anywhere in those forward uh, positions, which is also obviously something that Ange is always looking for. Unselfish, by which I mean finds himself in good positions, doesn't always take the shot. Really good at laying through balls for other players if they're in better positions. As with all of the players that we're currently linked with, he's really good in tight areas, brave on the ball, not afraid to take it with lots of players around him. Takes up really excellent number nine positions, kind of fox in the box positions. Reminds me a bit of Defoe in that sense as well. Always within that kind of six yard box when he feels like a chance is going to come. And that will really suit, uh, if he were to come to Spurs, would really suit Big Angie's style of play. Because as I told you, if you watch the video from when I went to the open training session at Spurs, the drill that they did just over and over again was getting to that byline, getting an outside player to the byline, cutting it back, just like all of those goals that Richarlison has scored in his great run of kind of 9 and 11 games or whatever that uh, stat he's on now. Um, what I like about Mamouche as well, similar to what I'm saying in terms of those fox in the box fox in the box type situations, sniffs out chances, seems to always be in the right place at the right time, and also just a really great finisher when he is one-on-one. We haven't had many one-on-ones. I remember Richarlison missed one uh, a few games ago, but what Richarlison doesn't seem that confident at, at the moment is getting in behind and finishing off those one-on-one chances. Sure, we've been playing a lot of teams who've been playing a deep block, and so we haven't been able to get in behind, but we will need players like Sonny, who when they get in one-on-one, they're absolutely lethal. And I like the look of Mamouche on that front. Uh, he's also a penalty taker. One thing I'd say is a little caveat, caveat, heavily right-sided. A lot of the players we've been linked with recently who I've talked about on my kind of transfer rumor videos have been 
confident on both sides with both feet. Mamouche is heavily right-sided to the point where often, and this is something Berbatov used to do actually to be fair, often he'll take a shot with the outside of his right boot rather than uh, take a risk on his swing on his left side. Uh, He's also very brave and decent in the air, which, you know, is worth talking about considering he's six foot isn't that tall for a striker realistically I mean obviously you get your kind of low center of gravity strikers like your Keens like your Defoe's like your Sergio Aguero's but when you're looking at being six foot or above you want to be decent in the end he is he's a good finisher I've seen him finish some good goals in the air so that's Omar Mamouche I'm going to give this one a kind of six six and a half out of ten will it happen I'd say 25 is a little bit on the higher end age-wise of the players that we seem to be looking at at the moment so I wonder if we'll be looking elsewhere and sniffing about other strikers. Uh, obviously, a lot of talk has been going on the last few months that we're going to um, potentially go in alongside Arsenal and maybe even Newcastle for even Tony at Brentford. Obviously, that would be a lot more money, even though his contract runs out in, I think, just over uh, a year's time. So first up, that was Omar Mamouche. Before I move on to the next transfer rumour, guys, please do press like on this video if you're enjoying it. Also, if you're not already, do subscribe for more regular Tottenham Hotspur daily content and go over to the podcast platforms if you want to hear this while you're out running or driving. Go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast and type in the Spurred On podcast, press subscribe or follow. And if you want to be a Spurred On Pro member or Patreon member, look in the description box, just £1 a month. And once I've got enough of you guys together, going to do some members-only video content. Okay, next up, Jaden Philogene. Philogene, I don't know how to pronounce it. You let me know in the comments how to pronounce it. He's a Hull City winger, came through the Aston Villa Academy. Really highly rated, only 22 years old. The interesting thing about Philogene is he didn't really get a chance at Aston Villa, but he's gone to Hull and absolutely ripped it up. Eight goals and six assists in only 20 appearances. And uh, maybe that is why Aston Villa, back in the days of Johan Langer, by the way, got a buyback clause on him. The rumours for that buyback clause is that it's only £15 million. However... It's not as simple as it's a buyback clause where Aston Villa can just buy him whenever they want. They can put in that money, but other clubs can also match it. And if they, if other clubs bid above £15 million, then Aston Villa have to match whatever they come in with. So that's why the Villa buyback clause isn't as important as you might think. He's been playing so well this season, he's got his first England under-21 call-up. What I really like about him is that he's one of these tricky wingers that we've been talking about a lot that Tottenham need. Someone who can do something a little bit different. He can play on the left or the right, and even when he's fronting someone up one-on-one, he's happy to go left or right, which makes him incredibly hard to defend against. He scored, if you haven't seen it, Go and look for his Rabona goal that he scored this season, where he breaks down the right, beats a couple of players, and then, for me, maybe he's looking to kind of cross it with a Rabona, but it loops in in the far corner. It's really impressive. He's a tall and rangy player, incredibly quick, with long strides, really covers the ground well. Do you know who he reminds me of? Ezra at Crystal Palace. We've talked a lot about being interested in Elise and Ezra at Crystal Palace as flair, kind of classic flairy Tottenham players who would be so great at our club. Well, maybe Philogene or Philogene, I don't know how to pronounce it, maybe he is a cheaper option. Uh, obviously, he'd take some acclimatising to the Premier League because he's never really played there, but he really looks very exciting. He's a brilliant finisher as well. Really good finisher, very impressed with that. Like I said, that languid style, incredibly strong and doesn't mind a long shot as well. Not afraid to take a shot from outside the box, which, as I've been saying in the last few watch-alongs and uh, match reviews of Spurs games, we need players who are going to be braver from 18, 20 yards and take more shots because we're not getting enough of those in, as far as I'm concerned. Love how Philogene beats a man, uses skill when needed, but sometimes just uses his raw pace. And also, he has a football brain. I know that's quite a generic term. But what I mean is, he's always got his head up. He's always happy to give it to someone in a better position if it's not him. He's not a selfish young player. And at 22, that's really good to see because you can still see a lot of players at that age who can be a little bit selfish on the ball. So very excited about this one because he's a young player, because he's raw, and because of the Johan Langer link, I'm going to give this a 7, 7.5 out of 10 possibility. Really like the sound of this link. Next up, another Italian link, Paratici, our consultant, doing his business. Dean Huysen from Juve. He's on loan at Roma, only 18 years old. He's a centre half, Dutch under-19 under international, six foot four inches tall. But as with all of the centre halves that we're interested in and have bought, good 
on the ball. Loves it on the ball. Very composed. On transfer market, rated at two and a half million euros only. But apparently, all the rumours that I've been reading saying that look, we're looking at maybe looking to buy uh, buy him for about thirty million euros, something like that. He's made nine appearances and scored twice in Serie A this season for Roma at the age of eighteen. Absolutely amazing. One of those goals, he brings the ball out of the back from the back, beats a couple of men, and sticks it in the top corner. Absolutely unbelievable in a Serie A game. He reads the game so, so well. Uh, lovely, uh, really good interceptions. Lovely interceptions, but not just intercepting the ball as it's coming through to opposition strikers. Getting the ball and then finding the right pass. Very brave as well. Gets in the way of, of shots really bravely. Good in the air, which you'd expect from a six foot four inch player. And uh, just a real star boy. Really like the look of this player, Dean Hussein. And reminds me, I'm going to really throw back here, but in terms of the way he brings the ball out from the back, he's like Bobby Moore. He's like Matthias Sammer. He's like Franz Beckenbauer. And more importantly for Spurs, like Jan Vertonghen. Loves to bring the ball out. And Ange would love as many players like that as possible. So really like the sound of Dean Hussein or Hyson. Not sure how to pronounce his name either. Only 18 years old. Let's get him signed up. Uh, at Spurs and really get all of these ball playing Tottenham players in the club and make us just so hard to play against because they're all so comfortable on the ball. That's what Ange wants. That's what I want. The only other rumour worth mentioning again, the Conor Gallagher one just keeps on cropping up. There can't be any smoke without fire on this one. Whether we're being used by his agents or by Chelsea, I do not know. But we're definitely interested and I would definitely be keen to get him through the door if we can in the summer. Guys, let me know what you thought of those Wonder Kid rumours and please do press that like button, press subscribe, go to the podcast uh, platforms, press follow or subscribe there and most importantly, come on you Spurs. <laughs>